What is up, Power Maniacs? Power Stasis here, and we are back in the world of EVE Online. And for those of you guys who are not familiar with EVE, this is probably going to look like a big old jumble of confusing screens. Uh, we're just going to go over a couple things real quick. Uh, first off, uh, right here, I have my Dominix. Uh, Dominix is a battleship in the Galente Empire. My character is Kaldari, but he has cross-trained. Um, when the game first came out, Galente was pretty badass, so I cross-trained it pretty heavily. Uh, then Kaldari kind of came back, so I cross-trained back to Kaldari, and now Minmatar and uh, fucking uh, Amar are doing better, so I'm slowly working my way up into that. Um, but this is my current fit. Uh, I have not played Eve in, I would say, I'd say realistically it's been two years. So there's been four expansions, because they do two expansions a year, one winter, one summer. So I've missed, I missed quite a bit, and a lot of it's changed. So this may not be the most optimal of setups. Um, they've added a new module here called Drone Damage Amplifier, and what this basically does is allow my drones to do even more damage, uh, which is kind of cool. I can show you guys that right there. Uh, description, where is it? Attributes, damage modifier. So it's about five percent more damage uh, for the modifier and then 23% aggregate drone damage. So with three of them, that kind of adds up. Uh, I do believe there's diminishing returns on them so you don't get 20% each time. It'll be like 20%, 15%, 10%, but it's still quite a bit. Um, and then I have several different types of drones real quick. I've got the guards which do the most damage. Uh, I think, let's see, you can see their damage modifier is 12 and then we've got the Wardens, their damage modifier is 9. Now you may be wondering, you know, why would you ever use the Wardens? Well, you can see right here, the Wardens' optimal range is 180, and their falloff is 30. So basically, if you are 30 kilometers to 180 kilometers from me, I can frag you with a Warden. Now let's look at that from the Guard's standpoint. Now the Guard's optimal is 72, and its falloff is 12. So basically, once they close range inside of uh, 70, I want to switch to the guards. And the guards will be able to hold up till about 12. Uh, and the only problem we're going to run into is that they get really, 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 really close. Which is why we have these little monsters. Uh, these little guys definitely do not pack as much punch. Uh, they're kind of weaker. Um, but the nice thing about them is they they can attack the small ships that close range. So the goal, at least on paper with this ship, is to engage targets downrange, drop them, you know, kill them before they close, and just, you know, continuously alpha strike and, and drop them quickly. So that hopefully is what's going to happen. Now what we're doing here is these are what you call missions. These are one of the many types of player versus player versus environment or pve things that you can do in eve um in most other mmos you know you'll have quests you'll have dungeons uh, you know whatever that you can grind well this is one of many eve options that you can do to make the same thing so basically if i complete this mission i'll make 729,000 100,000 729,000 esk which is a lot well, I mean, it's not really a lot, but it's a pretty decent amount. I'm going to get 2,600 loyalty points, which I'll explain in a later video. Uh, and another 601,000 esk if I get it. So I'm going to end up with about 1 1.3, 1.2 million esk. I guess it'd be closer to 1.35 uh, if I get this all done. Now, this is a bonus. Uh, so I have to complete the mission in 2 hours and 28 minutes, which usually not that hard unless you're fi you know, flying the, the worst fit Drake ever and you've got like 12 DPS. You might run into some issues then. Now, one of the things that you've got in EVE is when you're dealing with these ships and these, these fights, you're not really sure what the ship's going to be until you've, you know, really, really run missions a lot. You know, I'm sure there's some, some hardcore, full-time, lifer Care Bears who know all of the missions by heart. Uh, I am not one of those. Uh, this website right here is amazing. It is called evesurvival.org. It is one of the sites that I used when uh, I first started playing Eve and first started doing missions, and I was really, really happy to see that it was still here. 
Now what you do, uh, now the, the nice thing about this site is it has incursions. Remember I said this was just one of many. You can also do incursions, anomalies, exclamations, uh, W space, which is wormholes, uh, cosmos missions were kind of, they're a little different. Epic arcs, factional warfare, courier missions, mining missions, there is a ton of stuff. We are currently doing agent missions. So with the agent mission, uh, the name of our mission right over here is intercept the saboteurs objectives. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this side up. We're gonna go over here to intercept. And when you come down here, you're gonna notice, oh God, there's a bunch of intercept of saboteurs. What the hell, which one is it? How would I, how will I ever know? Save me Pyro. Well, this one's actually pretty easy. If you come down here, this is the Garistas icon. Uh, if you're curious, you can right click and you can pull it up and it will tell you. Uh, you can read it right there. See, it says Garistus, but uh, you can usually find some more information about them, what they do. You can actually see their name here under standings. It'll say Garistus Pirates. They kind of fucking hate me a lot. So negative six is pretty, pretty bad. So we pull this up. We see the saboteurs and you can see you've got Amar, Blood, Kaldari. Oh, Garistus. So we're going to click on level four. Now, hang on one second. This website shows a little more information about my computer than I prefer specifically my IP address. So we're gonna go ahead and skip that. All right, so right here, it's gonna say what you're gonna deal with. So obviously it's Garistus, so we're gonna be fighting Garistus. Uh, it tells you what kind of encounter, what kind of mission, and the key thing that you wanna deal with is right here, kinetic and thermal. So that means they're gonna be shooting kinetic and thermal. Well, this right here is a little different um, ship than I've flown. Usually I don't fly Dominixes like this. I usually fly, or back in the day, Again, take it two years ago. Uh, this would be a completely different setup, mainly because I didn't use drone amplifiers. So there is at least a 50% chance that I may misunderstand how to fly this thing and blow myself to hell. So um, right up here, we have shields, we have armor, structure, uh, and then, well, that's pretty much it. So, oh, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase. Shields, armor, structure. There we go. Now you can see right here in my armor, as we go across, you can see I have 10,000 armor hit points. And then I've got EM, I believe this is thermal, we've got kinetic, and then we've got explosive resistances. So you can see I'm wide open. I've only got 10% explosive resistance. Now thankfully, we're not dealing with explosive. Not gonna have a problem with it. So we're gonna be dealing with kinetic and thermal. Well, when you look at kinetic and you look at thermal, they're both at 30%, or 35%. So in this instance, since there's not a gaping hole in one of them, like if, if I had explosive and let's say it was kinetic and explosive, we might actually double up on explosive. It just kind of depends. So in this instance, we're gonna fit an armor thermic hardener and an armor kinetic hardener. Now what these do is they're running hardeners that run uh, and they give you a bonus. Uh, I guess I can show you guys that. They give you a bonus to the resistance. So you can see, where is it? Right here. Kinetic damage resistance, it gives me a nice 55% bonus to my resistances. So that's gonna bump that up to probably around 70, maybe 80 if I'm really, really lucky. I'll show you guys that here in a minute. Uh, I think it may actually only be about 35. It's, it's complicated math, let's just leave it at that. Eve loves its math. If, if you don't have a top-notch calculus degree, you're probably not gonna understand it. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. So anyways, uh, this one's fairly simple. Uh, you can see right here it says spawns may vary, but this is just an example. It even shows you a video, shows you the ships that it recommends and the damage type that it recommends. Um, damage type's really not gonna matter for us. I mean, if I wanted to get real anal, I could play with it and different drones have different damage types. For me, it's mainly just ranges and DPS. I don't give a shit. So when you warp in, I'm gonna be dealing with three frigates and two destroyers. Now the key thing you wanna look at is, are there any scramblers? Web Scramblers right here, we got Dire Pithies. Now, for those of you guys who are just now getting into EVE Online, which most of you watching my channel probably are, you're gonna be dealing with level one missions. I don't think I've ever been scrambled in a level one mission. Again, I haven't done level one missions in like seven years, eight years, nine years, long time, really long time. So it's possible there's webs and scrams. For those of you who don't know the basics of EVE, when you travel anywhere, you warp. So I go from this location and I warp to another location. Well, you cannot leave the field if you cannot warp. A warp scramble keeps you from leaving. Webs, not such a big deal for my ship because my ship isn't moving. Webs slow you down. They make you move slower. The slower you move, the easier you are to shoot. 
So web's not gonna be a problem, scramble is. So you always wanna make sure you kill the scrambles first, unless you just have the tank of Jesus and you don't care. In which case, eh, you don't really give a shit what order you kill them. But scrambles, watch them. Cause if you're scrambled, you can't leave, you get in trouble, you're fucking dead. Especially since I'm flying a ship that I have never flown in combat before, haven't played in two years, I'm gonna have to make sure that those scram pilots are gone. So for me, the most important thing is I need to make sure that I kill any dire pithies. Well, right here you can see we got pithy destroyers, demolishers, and pither gorillas. Not really gonna be a problem. After this though, we're gonna probably have to start dealing with them. Now, sometimes the way missions work, you're gonna see different layouts, but you can see we've got pocket one, pocket two, pocket three, pocket four. You wanna be careful how you aggro these, because if you shoot this one, and let's say you kill this guy, and then you kill this guy, well now this whole group's gonna come after you, and this whole group's gonna come after you, and if you shoot this one, that whole group's gonna come after you, and it gets really, really dicey, and all of a sudden you're fighting like 2,000 ships at once when you don't really necessarily have to fight them all. So that's enough bullshit, let's go ahead and get in. Let's see what's going on. Uh, this right here is a cool new unit, uh, the mobile tractor unit back in the day, Back when I played EVE Online, you had to have a second account. Well, they're kind of easing up on that a little bit. Uh, this device right here, what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull in all of my wrecks and take care of them for me. So we're gonna use that if we survive a little bit later. All right, so we've decided we're gonna go ahead and accept this mission. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and set destination. It's one jump away. We're gonna go ahead and accept it. There you go. And we're gonna attempt to go do this without getting frickin' killed. So wish me luck, my friends. Wish me luck. Make sure, I'll wait till once we get out. All right, so we are now out in space. Go ahead and move this over. Now, you're gonna notice that I've got a lot of stuff here that I didn't have prior. Uh, let's go ahead and align to that. Uh, or I had a lot of stuff prior that I don't have here. Uh, the reason for that is I've got active modules only displayed while passive modules are not. So let me just go over briefly what these are. Uh, sensor booster, that's going to let me acquire targets faster. It's kind of nice. It also gives me a targeting range bonus. Um, let me show you the... where is my ship info? Okay. Let's go ahead and go to our damages uh, on armor. So for kinetic thermal, you can see we're at 35, 35. I activate this, activate that, let them tick. Now we're gonna update that real quick, 35 and 35. And now we're at 70 and 70. So that's a pretty big you know, resistance bonus. So that should hopefully keep us going. Uh, this device right here, <coughs> excuse me. This is the large micro jump drive. This is something that I did not have when I played the game. This is something new. I don't know what it does. Uh, from what I understand, it moves me 100 uh, kilometers in a straight line. So for instance, uh, we're gonna eventually wanna go here, but we're gonna test it out. This should warp me straight in front, and I believe it drains all my capacitors. So let's go ahead and fire this up. I wanna test it. It's always nice to test shit before you actually, you know, need it. Gives you kind of an idea of what's going on. And bam. There we go. And you can see it moved me quite a distance away. So I'm almost 100 kilometers away. It does take a little bit to use, but with a Dominix, a Dominix is very, very, very slow. So uh, because it's a big battleship, because it's so slow, that gives me an ability to kind of close large distances quickly. The other nice thing is, if you're in trouble, you can use it to kind of pull some distance away as well. Uh, something tells me though it probably will not work if um, I'm webbed or scrammed. I will have to see. I haven't done any of the uh, in-depth setups on it. Other thing you're going to notice over here, this is my drone bay. You're going to see these are all the drones that I've got in my system. I've got seven guards, six wardens, and ten hobbies. Um, last time I played, you can only have five drones out at a time unless you were a carrier. I'm not a carrier, so I should be limited to five. I'm carrying a few extras because occasionally uh, drones do get popped by the evil enemies. So we wanted to be prepared for that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into Attila. Watch that beautiful animation. There we go. All righty. Uh, now we're in the mission system. And if we right click, you can see right here, 
intercept saboteurs and go ahead and warp to location i believe with this mission we're going to have a dead space warp gate now for those of you guys who are not familiar with eve dead space is basically the equivalent of a wow instance so whenever you pick up a mission a dead space gate is created for you and you warp to that gate and you're the only person that knows where that gate is and then that allows you to fight in your own little private pocket in space now there are ways with scanners for you to find these little pockets even if they're not yours and a lot of people mess around with those and cause a lot of problems for people we obviously are not going to be messing around with that anytime soon all right I'll see what we got. Now I'm going to be very, very cautious in this mission. So some of you guys who have been playing Eve for a long time, obviously this video is not for you. And this video is more just me having fun than it... Oh shit, there are a little bit of guys here. Alright, let's go ahead and pop our hardeners. Let's go ahead and pop our sensor booster. And go ahead and just start locking these down as soon as we can. Control left click will do that. Go ahead and launch our hobgoblins. Hobgoblins are launched. Let's go ahead and open that up. And you can see they're going to automatically go and engage. Targets are engaging me. Go. Target the next one. And you can see the damage that they're doing to me and the damage I'm doing back to them. Hobgoblins are pretty good at tearing small things to pieces and little chunks. Uh, for these little guys, they're very similar to, uh, if any of you guys have seen the Matrix, those Sentinels, how they just, you know, reach in and just rip the shit out of things, they're kind of like that. And you can see they're flying around this guy very, very, very quickly and disposing of them very, very rapidly. That's the nice thing about drones is these little guys have what they call micro warp drives and they fly really fast, really fast. All right, so I need to click that if I can get it. There, there we go. And then we want to add rec to overview. Now these are my recs here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these guys back. Return to drone bay. And that should reset my camera, but I'll go ahead and reset it anyway. All right, we reset. I'm not gonna bother scooping these this time uh, because they're small and it really doesn't all matter all that much. Oh, that's nice. That's one of the other nice things that they added. I'll explain that in a later video. All right, so we're going to go ahead and kill our little bonuses for now. Actually, you know what? We're fixing to go in. That doesn't really make much sense to kill them since we're fixing to go in. We'll fire it back up. All right. We're going to pop the gate and go on through. They did some small shield damage to me. Nothing too major. And firing up the hardeners once we get a little closer. Now this ship is not very cap stable. What that basically means, uh, this is my capacitor, my yellow stuff. That's your energy, or if you want to think of it in other game terms, my mana. Um, oh shit. I want to turn around and warp. Turn, turn, turn. Go ahead and blow those. I'm gonna blow my micro warp or micro jump just to get a little distance. There we go. And I think it's fucking cool. All right, so now we're at 130 kilometers out. Nice thing about being out at this range is it takes them a long time to get to me. So we're gonna go ahead and stop our movement. One other thing that is sometimes good to do, especially if you're worried about how well you're going to hold up, um, since I'm using sentry drones, this isn't going to work, but find a celestial point, something that you feel comfortable landing at. Um, obviously, this would be different in zero, 0 but uh, align to it. What that basically does, uh, and you can do that by clicking on anything. So let's say you click on this, you click the align button, and we'll go ahead and do that now even though I'm not going to use it, but that's going to be my evac point. And what I say by that is if I get in trouble, then all I have to do is click the jump button or the warp button, and I will start warping in that general direction. Now, obviously, I have to keep my speed up. If you see this little line right here, that is your 70% speed line. That's all the speed you need to warp. 
Um, unfortunately, if you don't have that speed, you can't warp. Alright, so let's launch drones. I really hope I can target out this far. Oh, shit. We're too far out. Just a bit too far out. Alright, scoop to drone bay. So we're going to do... Let's see, how far away are those guys? They're 160. We're going to try and shave a little off of this. Um, go ahead and shave that real quick. I want to get closer, but not too close. And this is going to be kind of hard. Because if I do it too close... All I'm going to do is just get within 60 kilometers of them. And I'd kind of like to be out a bit, but not too far. Alright, we're going to pop the jump. Alright, i got a minute and a half before I can get into it. Then we're just going to burn our afterburners and get closer. I'll just go closer. And this afterburner... Kick my speed up to a big blinding 356 meters per second, which is not much, even in the Eve world. Sounds like a lot when you think about, you know, a car driving down the street, but 356 meters per second is pretty damn slow. Uh, to give you an idea, some interceptors can get up to five or six thousand meters a second, and uh, those little sons of bitches you do not want on your butthole. They will ruin your evening. All right, so we need to get inside of 1100, I believe is what it said. Uh, oh, no, 8700. So that's my targeting issue that we've got. I'm never going to make it in time. So we're just going to jump. Yeah, I guess we'll just jump straight up. I could fix... Oh, no, 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 no. That's right, I didn't have my sensor booster on. Yeah, 11.30. We're almost there. We're almost there. I keep forgetting you gotta use the sensor booster. Now, I've got all my hardeners and stuff turned off now to save energy. Remember I was telling you I'm not very cap stable? I wanna be careful with that. Alright, we're at... We're at the range now. Alright, stop and speed. Now, sentry drones, unlike my hobgoblins that I was telling you about earlier, they don't they don't move. They're stationary. They're turrets, basically. You, you drop them. They're weapons platforms. So you want to make sure that you kill your speed before you decide to go off and do this. Now, I'm being a little little worried here. Well, not too worried, because, I mean, obviously I'm going to be standing still, so it's really not going to matter. I don't have a point picked out, but I'm going to be evacing down south if I need to. So I'm going to keep that kind of in my mental location. If I get in trouble, go straight down. All right, so we're gonna lock these guys up. I remember what I said, you wanna make sure you're fighting all the people from the same group. And I wanna get that pithy terrorist down there. All right, he's a little too far away. All right, so this right here is a destroyer. He should pop like a zit. We'll go ahead and engage target. Yep, he's gone. Switching. Yep, they're coming in now. So now that I'm shooting at them, they've realized this, and they're now heading my direction. They're also returning fire. Obviously at this range, unlike me, they are not designed to hit out at this range, and their damage is gonna suck. So my goal is to kind of wean them down before they get into range, which shouldn't be too hard. And I need to kill that pithy terrorist down there next. He's gonna be their little fast quick ships. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and kill those. Ah, there we go. That's what I wanted. Switching targets. And splat his ass. Night, night. Okay, it looks like I may have pulled these right here. And be careful with those. Again, those are gonna be the little fast ones. Yeah, especially this dire pithy right here. You can see how fast they're closing range. Okay, he's gone. Get that one. He's gone, switching. Oh shit, that one's getting close. Kill that one. Well, that one's 
one's still far out, and he's a big one. That's their battleship, that's their raven. Okay, he's gone. Kill that condor. He's almost inside their optimal. Thankfully, I got him before he could slide all the way in. And one of our drones is finally starting to take some damage, probably from that raven. And it looks like we have aggro from all of them now. Kill that Ferox next. I love watching their shields just drop. Alright. I want to clear out these little guys. Now every single one of these guys you're going to notice up here in the upper right has a bounty. Those bounties are how much I earn for killing the little bastards. Uh, obviously in missions with more and more people, you're going to make more and more money. So that's one thing to kind of keep in mind as you're fragging these guys. Okay. I'm going to have to be pulling this guy in soon. Because they're kind of chewing him to pieces. Get that guy. Now normally these little ships would be very hard to hit, but since they're coming straight at me, they're easy. There's no transversal, which is what they call it. Transversal is basically how fast the target is moving around you. Alright. Switching targets. Oh! We almost one-shot that. We did basically one-shot that. Holy shit. He's gone. Kill that. Let's frag these little bastards here. Get that one right there next. I'll switch back to you. Yeah, with these, it's almost hard just to keep the targets locked because you're fragging them so quick. There we go. He's gone. He's gone. One volley alphas. Have I mentioned how much I love sentry drones? I used to love them before they buffed them. There we go. And just like anything else in PvE, you know, I wouldn't say this is, you know, exciting or invigorating. It's, you know, honestly not very... Not very exciting, not very invigorating, it's pretty dull. But, you know, it is an ends to a means. You know, you do need to, or means to an ends, I guess. You gotta make the money. You know, you gotta earn what you need to earn to replace those ships. And, you know, in all honesty, this is not too bad of a way to do it. You warp in, you lock targets, they blow up, you get money. Easy, easy, easy. That's a rattlesnake. We're going to go ahead and alpha the other drone bay. I think that's pretty much all the ships here. Yeah, he's gone. Drop that one next. And we're going to switch. After we kill this other... Actually, we're going to scoop the drone bay. Scoop them all. all right, we're going to switch to guards. Now, you guys thought the damage on the other ones was good. Guards are even more damage. There now that one's outside of its range. Just barely. They may not be able to hit him. No, they let him up pretty good. These are badass. These have almost 800 DPS. And Pyro's got pretty damn good drone skills. Very good drone skills. 
this right here, he's worth 430k, that one's worth 540k, that one's worth 375. So as you guys can see, I'm earning actually more for simply just fragging all these guys than I do actually for the mission itself. Go ahead and open up our cargo bay. That destroyer almost made it inside our minimal, or, op, or our fall off. And you got to be careful with your optimal and your fall off. You want to keep them inside that for the sweet spot. If they get too close, then you can't hit them. They're too far away, you can't hit them. And in PvP, that can play a big role. You know, if you can keep your enemy in a you know an area they can't hit you on, you can do pretty good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and launch this for self. Um, this is my mobile unit. Um, I should see it floating. Yep, it's right up there. It'll be activated in three seconds, and if I'm right, it should pull everything in. We'll know here in just a second. Right, go ahead and engage target. And you can see it's going to start pulling in all these wrecks. Now it does unfortunately look like it pulls them in one at a time, which kind of blows. But, you know, that is what it is. I guess it beats me having to do it. If it does, in fact, pull them in one at a time and slowly, it does seem to be pulling that in fairly quickly. 22, 21, 20. I guess it's not bad. What I'm going to want to do is, instead of waiting till the end of a mission, I'm going to want to deploy that little guy early on. That way, uh, I don't have to wait at the end. Now, as you can see, I've got nothing here but loot. And what that tells me is we don't really need to do anything other than just kill. Um, this guy's going to be pulling in all of my wrecks for me a little bit at a time. You can open his cargo and you can see what he's pulling in. Uh, this ship right here had nothing on it, so obviously it's just a hulking wreck. Um, with wrecks, there are salvage that you can use, and with the salvage, what your guy basically does is uh, you take these wrecks, you run a little module over them, and you manage to pull some components from the system out, which is kind of nice. Uh, you can then turn and sell that, and some of them, like armor plating, can sell for you know 150k a piece. You know, you get 10, 15 of those a mission, you run 20, 30 missions, and it starts stacking up pretty good. So, I did want to show you guys what the PBE looked like. Uh, that's going to wrap this video up. I'm going to have to wait for this little monster to uh, slowly pull everything in. I'd kind of hoped that he was going to be able to pull in more than just one at a time. Uh, but pulling in one at a time is going to actually kind of suck. Uh, there is a ship called a Noctis, which uh, has eight high slots on it and with that you can pull four of these at a time and four um, then you can salvage them times four and that makes for a much more rapid looting process than what we're getting out of this little monster unfortunately but uh, again it's not so bad you just need to deploy it at the beginning of a mission as opposed to the end and uh, he'll probably keep up he does loot unfortunately he doesn't salvage so that is kind of a bummer. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys want to see more EVE content? Uh, like I said, I will be dropping some strategy guides and some tips for you guys next week. Possibly even as early as this weekend, uh, depending on how Thanksgiving goes. But uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. As always, if you liked it, slap that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next clip.